Everyone always wants to know, how did I do it? How did someone who looks like Jesus' meth-addicted cousin get so goddamn wealthy? And you know what I tell them? I used to be just like you. An aimless weenie with an empty bank account, watching so many videos on how to get rich that my legs went to sleep and I fell off the toilet. But I was also a dreamer. People were disgusted when I said I wanted to drive a rocket car, sprinkle caviar on my cornflakes, and take golden showers with supermodels. But a lion doesn't concern itself with the opinions of sheep, because lions don't understand abstract concepts. And neither do I, because I'm too busy making thick, milky strings of cold hard cash. Welcome then, future tycoons, to an ordinary guide where I investigate and castigate life's biggest challenges. Today we'll be finding out what it takes to join the Double Comma Club with the help of some of its most illustrious members. Together we'll sift through the grift, we'll crunch the numbers, we'll get down on our knees and guzzle on the garden hose of success, because this is an ordinary guide to becoming a millionaire. America in the early 20th century was a land of newly minted millionaires. An abundance of natural resources and easily exploitable immigrant labor meant that a lucky few were making more money than God's older, richer brother, Steve. But Gilded Age fat cats like J.D. Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie weren't just famous for the enormous amounts of cash they'd accumulated, but also because they were relatively self-made. They inspired a new form of aspiration for a new world in which anyone could be a millionaire as long as they had a dream, determination, and a pan tone 7020C skin tone, and one such creamy dreamer was Charles Ponzi. Ponzi was an Italian immigrant living in Boston, working a series of menial jobs, never holding down a position for very long. But Ponzi also had a lucrative side hustle, exploiting a loophole in the international mailing system, a tidy little racket that wasn't technically illegal. He was a charismatic salesman, but he also offered outrageous returns, promising investors 100% profits in just 90 days. In order to deliver on these claims, he simply paid previous investors with the new investors' money that was coming in, a plan that was as short-sighted as it was illegal. But in just over half a year, Ponzi was able to accumulate $8 million from 30,000 investors. He was even able to buy himself an air-conditioned mansion with a heated pool, but before he could even get his trunks on, his scam collapsed. The Boston Post exposed him, and he would spend the next 14 years in jail. Charles Ponzi's affluence may have been short-lived, but he offers two important lessons. The first, it doesn't matter what your product is, as long as your sales pitch is convincing. The second is an ironclad irony of money-making. The easiest people to take money from are those who are desperate to make more of it. Question number one, why is thinking important? Who could tell me? This pinstriped penis is Dan Locke. He is one of many successful YouTube finance gurus who have devoted themselves to teaching you how to get rich. And it's very nice of them. Do you know why you've got no money at the end of the month? because you have the habits of poor people. Dan Locke made his millions in sales and marketing, running businesses he doesn't name or go into much detail about. But he's also the author of multiple best-selling books on the topic of success, and has a popular motivational TED talk that he conducts while dressed as the devil's dick. His YouTube channel, though, is an intriguing cocktail of business advice, copywriting guides, and um, martial arts training videos. What's very common is the guy might grab me and boom, stop pounding my face. So, best thing to do, don't worry about this for a second. Come on, Dan, pull him off. You can do it. That's how I would do it. All right, from here. But Locke is probably best known for his Boss in a Bentley series, in which he squeezes out business wisdom pellets in the backseat of his Bentley. First thing you need, you need the millionaire mindset. The millionaire mindset, okay? I'm a concept guy, okay? I'm a big picture. Thinker. I'm a visionary. I hope he's cracked a window, otherwise he's gonna suffocate in all those farts he's huffing. You don't hate me, you hate yourself. In this promotion for Boss in a Bentley, Dan presents himself as James Bond, but he's made the savvy business decision of using the official James Bond theme, so for copyright reasons, I can't show it to you in all its glory. Unless I were to record a version of the theme myself. Bentley, 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 Bentley,
But Dan isn't on YouTube just to polish his own hood ornament, no, he's selling courses and exclusive webinars from his website. And you know he must be the real deal, because if you google Dan Lok scam or Dan Lok fraud, all you get are glowing reviews and video testimonials, and only half of them link back to his website. In SEO marketing, this is known as objection handling, a simple but effective public relations strategy that proves the old adage that the best place to hide a body is on the second page of Google. We'll come back to Mr. Locke, but he brings me on to my second tip for becoming a millionaire. Seamstress, fashion icon, and flogger of spenny stink water, Gabrielle Chanel rose to the top of the fashion industry with her keen aesthetic eye and a distinctive style that was appealing to all sectors of society. She also controlled her public image tightly. Her autobiography is filled with falsehoods and exaggerations, glossing over her less than glamorous childhood growing up in an orphanage. Chanel is an iconic figure in her country of birth, as French as a white flag caked in cigarette ash and the ejaculate of cheating spouses. She's a symbol of her nation, as strong and unassailable as Notre Dame Cathedral, ooh, no, wait. As strong and reliable as France's employment rate, ooh, no, not that either. Shit, that place is really falling apart. Anyway, Chanel crafted a public persona that was deeply entwined with the brand that shared her name, so much so that the company is still trading on her image today, years after she first became worm food, and even after she was outed as a Nazi spy. That's right, the inventor of the little black dress was also fond of little black mustaches. She spent most of the Second World War in bed with a Nazi officer, committing what the French called at the time, collaboration horizontale, and there's reliable evidence to suggest that she was personally delivering information to Nazi high command. The fact that the Chanel company is still sweeping her swastikas under the rug is proof of just how valuable a personal brand can be. While Dan Locke may be huffing on his own gut gas, he's nothing compared to the flatulent sommelier that is Grant Cardone. I spent so much time with him. Based on the five that you associate with, my net worth went down yesterday. Because I know he's worth less than me. Cardone is one of the most successful YouTube finance gurus going, and has earned his stripes with a genuinely impressive multi-million dollar real estate portfolio. Something near and dear to everybody's heart money, why you don't have it. Cardone's brand of business advice mostly takes the form of bragging. If I'd have quit, I wouldn't have the wife, wouldn't have the kids, wouldn't have the bird. He wants you to know that he's so rich that he actually finds it insulting when people call him a millionaire. So when I tell you that, no, please don't call me a millionaire, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an insult to the amount of work that I've done. Don't worry, Grant, there's lots of other things we can call you. In fact, I've made a list. Grant Cuckdone, Neck Gristle, Grant Hardbone, the human hard-on, Grant, but aside from looking like a sexual harassment lawsuit someone wrapped in skin, Cardone is probably best known for his series of videos where he shows off his private jet. And as we've all learned this year, owning a private jet gets you nothing but respect from people like Bill Clinton, Kevin Spacey, and Woody Allen. And what do all those people have in common? That's right, success. This is lifestyle marketing. And while you may think it's ridiculous, it works for the kind of people who think it's aspirational. I have a little penis. And for the same audience, his abrasive character is evidence of a ruthlessness that has got him to the top. Which brings me to my third tip. In 1880, famed circus owner and showman P.T. Barnum wrote one of the first financial advice books, The Art of Money Getting. In it, he speaks about integrity and the danger of providing a product that doesn't live up to the hype. Ironic, considering his whole career was based on the negation of that advice. There's no denying that Barnum was one of the most successful promoters who ever lived, but he was also a fraudster and a complete bastard. Barnum's first runaway success came when he toured the country with a black woman he claimed was over 120 years old, when in fact she was around 80. And while she was the attraction, she never received a penny. And when she died, Barnum sold tickets to her autopsy. And I know that's a bummer, but he also mashed fish and monkey parts together in a giant test tube and told people it was a mermaid. You'd think anyone who paid to see the fish ape would realize that they were staring at chunky monkey fish soup, but Barnum was smart. He knew that when people want to believe something, they'll fall for anything. Another man who's made his millions from being a grade A knob is this dude, Dan Pena. What did you do to take advantage of the greatest transformation of wealth in the history of the planet? Dan Pena is a veteran of the financial guru game, reflected in the fact that he's always cosplaying as the fucking Monopoly man. But forget Bentleys and private jets, this motherfucker's got a castle. <laughs> 
He's been organising mentorship retreats in Guffrey Castle since at least the 1980s, where he doles out his unique brand of shoutspiration. And the reason you're here, you snowflake cunt, is because nobody treated you like shit. Tough love works! If I wanted to get screamed at like that, I'd just spend a weekend with the voices in my head. You can't fucking measure it. How do you measure personal development? You don't, you fucking retards! His retreat seems to appeal to the kind of people who feel like they should be told off for not being rich. Now think about that. I don't think too hard because you don't have even that many brain cells. It's like a disappointing S&M punishment weekend, where instead of enjoying a hearty spanking, you get screamed at by a delusional fuck knuckle with a pocket square fetish. Don't you understand that? What the fuck do I have to do here? Pena has been running a version of this retreat since the 1980s, when he was actually making money as the founder of a Texas oil extraction company called Great Western Resources, a company he was ousted from in 1991 by the board of directors, allegedly for absurd uses of the company's funds, including flying his pet dog via private jet. Today though, Dan derives most of his income from his various mentorship programs, or from renting out his budget Bond villain lair for weddings. And his mentees have gone on to be very successful. His former mentee include Ron Legrand, a successful real estate developer, and oh, it looks like he has his own business advice scheme too. And another mentee is, oh, Dan Locke. Huh. What a kawinky dink. In fact, these guys seem to be hanging out all the time, almost as if they were involved in some kind of cross-marketing audience sharing scheme. Or they may just be following my fourth tip. Money is like leprosy. If you hang around people who have it for long enough, you'll get it eventually too. Although you might have to wait for something to hit the floor first. Of course, the best way to do this is through an inheritance. So if you already have a wealthy family member, what are you watching this video for? Simply schedule a meeting to discuss their will, preferably at the top of your no doubt long and elaborate staircase. Even Bubbles, Michael Jackson's pet chimp inherited $5 million after the pop star's death, which was the most Michael gave anyone. That wasn't in exchange for silence. But if you're not the relative of a rich person or a famous kiddie fiddler's pet primate, you could always go on a mentorship scheme. Back to Dan Dock, the self-proclaimed king of high ticket sales, TM, and me described king of talking out of his own ass, offers many different kinds of mentorship scheme, all catered to your specific desperations. He even has his own tube your own horn, TM course, all about finding success on YouTube. And it's a good thing he did trademark that, because it bears a striking resemblance to my own YouTube success course, Stroking Your Own Tube with the Ordinary Guy. But his standard package is the High Ticket Closer course, which will set you back a fresh $2,500. On his website, Dan is very eager to point out that his course is based on what he calls, and I shit you not, his wealth triangle. What he leaves out of his promotional material though is what happens at the end of the course. You will be offered another course for an additional two grand. And after that, you'll have an opportunity to join his exclusive Closes in Black course, which will set you back an additional four digit monthly fee. But once you're on that course, you'll finally get 10% commission for every other gormless rube that you can convince to get on the ground floor of Dan's Dorito scheme. But that is nothing compared to Grant Cardone's 10X conference, a yearly weekend of motivational speeches and dubious networking opportunities. I mean, watch how Grant Cardone makes his entrance. Jesus, it's like a Scientology convention where the water's been spiked with high potency MDMA. Yeah, yeah Grant, yeah! Does anyone want the back rub? And these Scientology vibes aren't a coincidence. Cardone isn't just a Scientologist, he is, allegedly, an operating Thetan level eight, which is the highest level of spiritual training that a member of the church can purchase. I mean, attain. This guy hasn't just drank the Kool-Aid, he's getting weekly Kool-Aid enemas from the pitcher man himself. Oh yeah! But to be fair, it does seem like Xenu has indeed blessed Grant Cardone with some special Scientology superpowers of persuasion. A general admission ticket to his cult friends cost $500, and top shelf diamond tickets cost 10 grand. Although Grant does seem a teensy bit insecure about the numbers of empty seats at the stadium. If there is an empty seat next to you, trust me, somebody paid for that seat. Okay? 
Somebody bought that seat. They're not. They're just not here yet. The fact is, it doesn't even matter if Grant is making money from the conference or not. Like his private jet and his tumor-sized wristwatches, it's just another big gulp of lifestyle marketing. Its main purpose is to persuade you to buy a place on his always just about to sell out mentorship scheme. And that's the real secret to how all these guys are making money. As L. Ron Hubbard actually said, if a man really wants to make a million dollars, he better start his own religion. Sales is about doing. It's a phone call. It's a follow-up call. It's an email. It's a visit. While it would be inaccurate and potentially litigiously risky for me to call these guys scam artists, they do seem to occupy a realm that I like to call scambiguity. TM. They aren't selling business plans or concrete opportunities. They are selling confidence, reliant on the knowledge that people believe it's contagious. They are experts in manipulative marketing. And if you have that secret sleazy source, they might be able to teach you something. But what they won't teach you is how to run a business or how to make money in any way that isn't a confidence trick. If you really want to make your dreams come true, you should invest in something you believe in. Like my Patreon page. Act now because I'm only letting the next 100 people join for some reason. Daddy needs a new castle, baby. Woo! <clears throat> Seriously, please. I owe Dan Locke like 40 grand and I spent the rest of my money on Bitcoin and Herbalife diarrhea tea.